Good morning, everyone. Good morning again. Uh, we're reading again from John Piper's 50 Reasons Why Jesus Came to Die. And we're on reason number eight, to become a ransom for many. Jen's going to read to us from Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. Thanks, Jen. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can, they answered. Mm. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who were regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their high officials exercised authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mm. Thanks, Jen. John Piper writes, There is no thought in the Bible that Satan had to be paid off to let sinners be saved. What happened to Satan when Christ died was not payment, but defeat. The Son of God became human so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil. Hebrews 2 verse 14. There was no negotiation. When Jesus says that he came to give his life as a ransom, the focus is not on who gets the payment. The focus is on his own life as the payment, and on his freedom in serving rather than being served, and on the many who will benefit from the payment he makes. If we ask who receives the ransom, the biblical answer would surely be God. The Bible says that Christ gave himself up for us, an offering to God. Ephesians 5 verse 2. Christ offered himself without blemish to God. Hebrews 9 verse 14. The whole need for a substitute to die on our behalf is because we have sinned against God and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3 23. And because of our sin... The whole world is held accountable to God, Romans 3 verse 19. So when Christ gives himself as a ransom for us, the Bible says that we are freed from the condemnation of God. There is, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8 verse 1. The ultimate captivity from which we need release is the final judgment of God, Romans 2 verse 2, Revelation 14 verse 7. The ransom price of this release from God's condemnation is the life of Christ, not just his life lived, but his life given up in death. Jesus said repeatedly to his disciples, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, Mark 9 verse 31. In fact, one of the reasons Jesus loved to call himself the Son of Man, more than 65 times in the Gospels, was that it had the ring of mortality about it. Men can die. That's why he had to be, be one. Had to be one. The ransom could only be paid by the Son of Man because the ransom was a life given up in death. The price was not coerced from him. That's the point of saying the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve. He needed no service from us. He was the giver, not the receiver. No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. John 10 verse 18. The price was paid freely. It was not forced. Which brings us again to his love. He freely chose to rescue us at the cost of his life. How many did Christ effectively ransom from sin? He said that he came to give his life as a ransom for many. Yet not everyone will be ransomed from the wrath of God, but the offer is for everyone. There is one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ who gave himself as a ransom for all, 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6. No one is excluded from this salvation who embraces the treasure of the ransoming Christ.
Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow. See you then.